Hi everyone, it's Tox from CritsHappen.com. Thanks for watching and welcome back. Today we've got another critical preview, this time of a game called The Agents. The Agents is all about special agents around the world who have been disavowed by their organization and their organization is shut down. So they are all forming together in different factions and you and your opponents are going to control different factions and are going to impact the game with the agent's ability. Now, you're going to have to face some really tough choices because the way the game is designed. As you can see by everything laid out in front of me, everything is card based. There's going to be agents that are instantaneous agents that will take effect and then be discarded. There are going to be agents that stay in play and are going to have different choices for you to make, which we'll talk a little bit about in the gameplay. And then there's mission cards that will be attached to your factions that are going to get you points as well. The goal of the game is to be the first player to amass 40 points. And they give you these nice cards that are double-sided to keep track of points. But points are not just a victory condition. It's also how you're going to recruit new agents and get new missions. So the entire baseline of the agents is based around you making tactical and strategic decisions, not just for your agents that you control in your factions, but your opponent's factions as well. It's a very fast paced, very interesting game. We're going to jump in, show you a little bit about gameplay, and then we're going to come back and explain some of our experiences and what we found when we've been playing the agents. But before we do that, I want to take a second and let you know, aside from being a Kickstarter launching on July 8th, you can also go to playtheagents.com and download a complete print and play version of the game. It comes with everything that you're going to see here. You can download the rules, you can read the rules on your own, and I think it's a great way that if you're interested in the game to check it out on the very cheap side and be able to see if it's something that not only interests you from an aesthetic perspective, but also interests you from a gameplay perspective and see if it's something you would like with you in your group. Before we jump in, it's good to know that this is a two to four player game. A two player game runs you about 15 minutes to 20 minutes. A four player game can go about 30 to 45 minutes. The longest game we've played in a four player game has taken an hour and it was highly tense and very action filled, which you'll see when we talk about the choices. But for now, come with me, grab your best espionage gear, get ready for some cloak and dagger, and let's jump into the world of the agents. So here you see the setup for a two player game of the agents. All of the agents are shuffled and each player is dealt three. All of the missions are shuffled and each player is dealt one. And then in addition, each player is going to be given five points worth of point cards. The point cards are nice because they're double sided and you can flip them over to keep track of all of your points. Now, aside from points being the victory condition, meaning the first player to get the 40 points wins the game, points are also how you're going to recruit new agents and acquire new missions. Now the game is played by building factions of agents and you're going to do that between yourself and the player to your left and your right. So in a two player game, the, uh, the faction in front of you and the faction in front of your opponent are going to have, be accessed by both you and your opponent. In a four player game, if I were sitting here, I would control my faction and the two factions on my left and on my right. I would not, however, control the faction of my opponent across from me. So in this a two-player game, the faction that's going to be placed in front of me and the faction placed in front of my opponent are going to be accessible to both of us. Now, the factions are built by placing agents next to each other. And at the beginning of the game, there's no agents on the table, so placing the first agent is going to start that faction. Once an a, a agent is in a faction, then agents can be added to either of its ends by either player. And the key thing to know about this is orientation is everything. Let's take a look at some of the agents. So we're going to look at the three agents that I've got in my hand here. We're going to go ahead and put the mission off to the side for now. But let's take a look at what we see. The, there's three different types sitting here. There's one that has a half arrow that is black on white called the activist and she has an ability that says swap two agents in your other faction. This one is the undercover and has a white on black arrow on each half and says turn any non-adjacent agent in this faction. Now we'll get a little bit more into the commands and the abilities here in a second. And then the third one has an upside down three and an ability that's for the recruiter that's called draw two agents from the agents deck to your hand. 
The key thing that's going to come up in every turn of the agents is the choice that you're going to make when you play agents. What happens is, let's say I'm going to keep the undercover and the recruiter in my hand and I'm going to start this faction in front of me with the activist. When they come into play, you can use their command if the command is facing you. If I played her like this, my opponent could use the command because it's facing them. Now why would I do that? Well, as the factions grow and you match arrows next to each other, at the end of turn, so my turn, the end of my opponent's turn, what's going to happen is in the factions that you control that have arrows pointing at you, you're going to get points for. So you're going to have to make decisions. Let's say this is a two-player game. If it's the end of my turn, I still have access to these abilities or these commands as they're called in the game. However, because there is an arrow that is unmatched pointing at my opponent, they're going to gain one point. As the game goes on, you're going to match up arrows of the same type. So example, if we put the hacker out, this is a white on black matched arrow. My opponent is going to get two points. So if this was my faction at the end of my turn, my opponent is going to get three points based on just the arrows pointing at him. I'm still going to have access to all the commands, but they're going to start racking up points really, really quickly. So I could, if I chose not to have access to the commands, play these guys this way, which is going to give me the points because the arrows are pointing at me. However, it gives my opponent access to their commands. On your turn, you have two actions that you can take. You can do all of them, you can do none of them, or you can do some of them in any order you want. Your actions are very simple. You can either play an agent from your hand to a faction that you control. You can reactivate a command that is already existing in a faction that you control. Or you can buy an agent or a mission. Now, we'll get into buying agents and missions in a second. But playing and reactivating commands is really fun. Now, you remember we talked about playing the activist from the very beginning. Well, if she's the first agent in this faction, it says swap two agents in your other faction. There's no agents in my other faction that I control, so it's not going to help me. However, later in the game, as this faction develops, I could reactivate this command as long as it's facing me and it's in a faction that I control to then take control or use this command and swap those two agents. Swapping basically means if here are the agents and I have, let's say, these agents in my opponent's pool over here, and it says swap, you just literally swap. There are some things like the undercover that are going to say to turn, and to turn means that you flip them around. So in a case like this, where I had something that had one arrow that was unmatched and one arrow that was matched facing my opponent, if I had the ability to turn the undercover, that breaks those arrows and my opponent is no longer getting points and I still have access to two of the commands. Now, these are the basic type of agents in terms of arrows on one side and commands on the other. There is also another type of agent, which is an instant agent, which is what this recruiter is. The recruiter has the same option. You have a command that will happen when it is played, and you have points. Whoever the points are facing is who gets them. So if I played this recruiter, I would draw two cards from the top of the agent stack and my opponent would get three points. So he could get a five and put two back and he would be at eight points. However, if I wanted to play it this way, I would get the three points, but my opponent would draw two cards from the top of the agent stack. So there are always going to be options and choices in terms of what you're going to do on every turn you take. Now, let's talk a little bit about missions. Oh, before I finish, the recruiter, any of these instant agents are just sent to a common discard pile. And that's important when we talk about recruiting. We'll talk about that in a second. Now, again, let's say the game has progressed and this is one of our factions and this is another one of our factions. Without using an action on your turn, you can play a mission to a faction. You can have up to two missions attached to a faction, but it has to be a faction you control. The missions are going to vary and impact gameplay quite a bit. For example, this one says witness and one. Each time a command is reactivated in the game, you get one point. 
It doesn't matter if it's in a faction you control or in a faction you don't control. So at the end of the turn, if three or two different agents had their uh, commands reactivated, I would get two points from this. So that's going to impact the game greatly. There's also things like this one, reinforcement. At the end of the turn, you'll get four points if two agents with the same ability are facing you in this faction. So if I get another undercover or another hacker or another named character that has the same ability on their command that's facing me, I'm going to get four points. So this is another way to just keep racking up points. But remember, you can put these on factions you control. So while I may have two on this faction, my opponent could play a uh, mission onto this faction as well because he has access to this faction. This one says chosen few, two points if this is the shortest of your factions. So my opponent could play this and right now it's not the shortest of his two factions. This is three, this is two. But he could play a card somewhere along the line that allows him to move somebody from one faction to another faction and at the end of his turn this becomes the shortest and he's going to gain those two points. The Agents is very fast paced. There are a lot of things happening and you're always going to have the option of do I give my opponent's points and take commands or do I give my opponent access to commands and take the points. Now let's talk a little bit about recruiting agents and getting missions. You can either take agents from the common discard pile or from the deck and you can do the same with the missions. There's going to be times where the, the missions get discarded. So let's say we have a discard pile here for the missions and a discard pile here for the agents. You can buy an agent from the top of the agent deck for one point. So I can discard one point and draw one card as an action on my turn. As another action, I can buy an agent from the retirement pile, which is the discard pile, for two points. So if I wanted to get that recruiter back, I could spend two and get her back into my hand as well. I can get a mission from the top of the deck for three points, or a mission from the top of the retirement pile for four points. So missions are going to be very helpful, but they're also going to be very expensive. And because you get two actions per turn, for example, let's say I wanted to play this recruiter this way. I would get three points, one, two, three. My opponent would draw two cards from the top of the stack and put that in their hand. This would then go to the discard pile. I could then, as my second action, spend two of my three points I just acquired to get her back into my hand and play her on the next turn. And that's just a basic combination. There are a lot of different combinations inside of the game. One of my favorites is killing. So here's one called the Assassin. Let's take a look at this and say that this was my opponent's faction and all of the arrows were facing him and all of the arrows were matched. So in this case, I have access to all of these commands and all of these commands. However, all of these matched arrows are facing my opponent. So at the end of my turn, he's going to get two, four, six points for three different color matched arrows. Well, I don't like that. I need to break it up. I could play the assassin. Now, she's three points to my opponent, so he would get three points automatically. But I get to kill any agent. And when you kill an agent, you keep them in the same orientation and flip them face down. That completely breaks that up, and now my opponent goes from getting six points to only getting two points. Now, if I can combine that with any other character to be able to possibly flip one of these guys or turn one of these guys, which is the command name, I could potentially break up their entire scoring plan. And that's what the Agents is all about. Being proactive and strategic on your turn and being reactive and tactical on your opponent's turn to make sure you see what they're doing, but may always make sure that you are one step ahead. So that's the Agents. We've had a lot of fun playing two, three, and four player versions of this game. In fact, one of the things that really surprised me about this game, I had a conversation with a friend recently that a majority of games we're seeing recently, when they play four or more players, they play in a certain way. And they almost kind of dumb down the rules for a two player game. So the experience of playing a game at two players versus playing at four players has recently been very different. This totally breaks that, and I was very happy about it. This game, whether played two, three, or four players, is very fast-paced, 
highly strategic, very tactical in terms of when and where you're going to play people, and always has provided a lot of fun for us. The thing that really separates the agents in terms of gameplay to me is that every card you play benefits you and benefits an opponent. And whether you're playing two players, three players, or four players, there's always someone else who it's going to benefit. So you really are faced with some really strategic, really tactical decisions on when and how do I play these agents into play, giving my opponents points, giving me points, giving them access to commands, making sure I have access to commands, or head faking and turning agents and killing agents so that something you play that you, or your opponent thinks is going to be a benefit to them suddenly turns out to be a trap for them. There is a lot to this little card game, and it was a real joy being able to put it through its paces. If you're interested in doing the same thing, you can go to playtheagents.com, and they actually have a fully downloadable print and play version of the game. While this is going to be on Kickstarter, and I'm sure there's going to be many more videos and reviews and comments about this, if you're interested in seeing how it plays for yourself, having that available rule set and full print and play set up for the game is a really cool option as well. So if you found a lot of interest in watching this video, I highly suggest to go check it out at playtheagents.com. Overall, we have really enjoyed our time with the agents. We look forward to seeing their Kickstarter program and seeing some of the stretch goals and rewards they have. Sar Shai, who is the designer of the agents, has done a really good job putting together a very small, very portable game, but has a lot of replayability and a lot of options for multiple different types of players. The other thing, too, that I really did enjoy about this game is while it is very covert, very, you know, cloak and dagger style, we've played this with as young as Ninja Zack, who is seven years old, and as old as my father, who is 60-something years old, and we've had as just as much fun with both cases. It's a very straightforward game, it's a very simple game to learn, but it's the choices you're going to have to make on those cards that are really going to separate your gameplay and your enjoyment when you sit down with your friends to play the agents. We hope that you enjoyed this critical preview. Again, if you have an opportunity and this interests you, we do suggest to go check out their Kickstarter page, which is going to be live on July 8th. Otherwise, you can check them out at playtheagents.com. But, until we see you next time, thank you so much for watching. We hope you enjoy your world in espionage and cloak and dagger. Keep rolling those dice, and we hope they're all crits.